I was just browsing the internet for the latest and greatest AI news and I found this really interesting tool by Google that lets you take um, notes that's been out for a while. It's called Notebook LM. And then it takes those notes and it turns it into a podcast almost type of uh, episode. Okay, so it's not just reading or summarizing your notes. It actually turns it into a podcast um, and I want to show you how that works, how that looks like, and how it sounds. So stick with me. I'll speed it up a little bit, but I'll show you all the steps. First up, let's talk about uh, the news release. This actually came out on September 11th, yesterday. And they're talking about it. And all you need to do is you go to Notebook LM, you create a new notebook, add at least one source. I did try to add a few sources and it had a problem generating it. But we'll go over that in a minute. And then in your notebook guide, click on generate and here we go. Okay, so let's see how that works. First of all, I'm going to get some sources. And uh, what I did here is I went to perplexity and I wanted to know AI news of the last seven days. It sped out something here. Okay, this is our response. Then I wanted to have uh, AI relevant, AI news relevant for small and medium sized businesses. So we got another source. I copy and pasted that one over. And then AI news for career professionals, and it spit out um, a few more uh, notes right there. Okay, next, I went over to Notebook, and I'll just show you kind of how that works. If you haven't tried it already, it's Notebook LM. Let me see if I can put that in here. You see it right there, notebooklm.google.com. Okay, so you got that there. And uh, so what I did was basically just go to Perplexity, and I picked the first one here. I picked this button here, copy that. It copies all the sources of all the answers as well. And I go over here and select this one here. You can add uh, Google Docs, you can add PDFs, all kinds of things. I have copied text and then I just copy paste it. And that's basically the source from perplexity, including citations, okay? I did that for every one of those three topics. Remember, general news, um, the a small and medium-sized businesses, uh, AI news, and professional career professionals uh, news. AI news for these three categories. You can already see as soon as you put it in here, it generates a short summary. So let's just do this real quick here. We'll go to the second uh, source. This is for small, medium-sized businesses. We add another source right here on this plus sign. Copy, paste. There you go. So you can kind of go over this with me. And then the last one relevant for career professionals. Add another source. Copy, paste. Okay. And then we have those three. It doesn't name it automatically. You can rename the sources here if you like, but you don't really have to. So. A problem that I ran into is I select all those, right? It said earlier that you only need to select one. However, it doesn't let me generate. So if you look here, this is what it usually would look like, okay? You can uh, basically click on the note guide or you could start typing, like give me a summary. Give me a summary of the last week's AI news. Let's see what it does. It's thinking, thinking. That's how usually LM would work because you have all these sources selected. Uh, hope it doesn't take too long. Let me push myself up here. There you go. And it basically gives me a nice little summary based on the sources. And it also always links to the sources that it has used. So this comes from source one. I assume this is source one. This is from source two. Well, maybe it's different because there's source four as well. So, oh, I guess, no, when you hover over it, it actually shows you where it came from. So this is the part where it directly came from, okay? You can see I don't use uh, Notebook LM very often, but this is actually very interesting because, well, again, this is a problem here because it's grayed out for some reason. What I did before, I had to refresh it. Ah, there you go. And then you just click it and you wait a few minutes. But <laughs> I already prepared something here. Uh, how do we go back here? There you go. 
This is the one that I already prepared. Same thing. All I did was also uh, basically copy paste everything into an AI uh, news PDF document. But that's irrelevant because I created this and it already created the conversation. So let's have a listen. I won't play the whole thing, but I just want to get you a preview and so you can get a feel of what it actually sounds like when it Google Note LM creates a podcast style audio summary of your sources in any given notebook. Okay, so here we go. Well, I hope it's not going to take too long. Oh, there you go. Seven minutes, seven minutes, 27 seconds. Check this out. Okay, okay. Ready, ready for, for a deep, deep dive? dive. Let's, Let's talk, talk AI. AI. Sounds good. Not, Not the stuff of sci-fi movies, movies though, though. Right. Right. right? Right. We're talking, We're talking about, about the AI, AI that's, that's already changing how, how we live and work, work, even in small ways. It's everywhere you look these days, sound like it's woven into everything. Totally. Remember when getting a new phone was just about deciding between iPhone or Android? It's simpler times. Now Apple's turned their iPhone launch into like an AI showcase. No kidding, they're going all in on it, which I guess tells you something, right? AI is mainstream now. For sure. Yeah. And the stuff they're doing, it's wild. They even named their new software Apple Intelligence. I saw that. It's like your phone has, a, has brain a brain now, now or, something. or something. Seriously. So that's pretty it's insane, like isn't it? Emails for you, schedule your Let me see. Yeah. It's, it's kind of kinda freaky. It makes, it makes you wonder, wonder what, does what does this mean, mean for, for us in the long run? run? I think that's pretty insane because these guys are the, the man and the woman. They're having a conversation with a lot of those antics. And it's a very fluid simulation of a conversation. I think it's awesome. And actually, in fact, I'm just going to let it play out so you can kind of get the gist of the last week's AI news. You know, exactly. exactly. Like, like what, what will we, we do, do with all this extra brain, brain power? power? And what about, what about jobs? jobs? Yeah, yeah, good point. One article I read said AI, AI could automate like 300 million jobs, jobs globally. globally. Whoa, 300, 300 million. million. That's, That's a scary, scary thought. thought. Right. right. Makes you wonder Makes about, you about the future of work. work. It's, it's definitely, definitely something, something to think, think about. about. I mean, no, I mean, no one, one wants to be replaced, replaced by, a by a robot, robot right? right? Absolutely, Absolutely not. not. So, so what, are, are we all doomed? doomed? I wouldn't say doomed. doomed. It's, it's more about adaptation. adaptation. Okay, okay, so, so how, how do we adapt? adapt? AI, will, AI change will change how we how work, work, the types, types of jobs, jobs we have. We have. It's, not it's not just about replacing us entirely. It's about transformation. Transformation, okay. So, like, instead of being afraid of AI taking our jobs, we should be thinking about how it'll change them. Exactly. Think of it like this. AI can take over some of the tedious, repetitive parts of our jobs. The stuff no one really enjoys doing anyway. Exactly. Which then frees us up to focus on more creative, strategic, human-centric tasks. So it's like AI becomes our assistant and we get promoted. In a way, yeah. The key is we have to be willing to learn and adapt alongside AI. Lifelong learning is going to be more important than ever. That's a good point, right? We can't just rest on our laurels. Exactly. So what kind of skills do we need to be learning? Do we all need to become like coding experts? Not necessarily coding, no. It's definitely useful, but AI is about more than just tech skills. Okay, so what else is there? It's about critical thinking, problem solving, communication, those uniquely human skills. Soft skills. Exactly. Those are going to be even more important in an AI-driven world. So it's less about knowing how to code, more about knowing how to think, huh? AI can process information crazy fast, sure, but it can't replicate human judgment or creativity. Right, like AI can crunch the numbers, but it can't tell you what they mean. Exactly, or come up with a killer marketing campaign or write a compelling story. Those are human strengths. So we need to play to our strengths, leverage what makes us different from the machines. Exactly, and when you combine those human skills with the power of AI, that's where the magic happens. It's like AI becomes the tool and we become the masters. I like that. We need to learn to use these tools, not fear them. Speaking of using AI, I'm curious, how does this all play out for small businesses? It's huge for small businesses. Honestly, they might even be better positioned to benefit than big corporations. Really? Why do you say that? Small businesses, they're agile, they can adapt quickly, experiment. They're hungrier. Exactly. And they're laser focused on their bottom line. AI can help them streamline, become more efficient. And I've read that a lot of small businesses are already seeing those benefits, right? Absolutely. It's not just some futuristic fantasy, it's happening now. So like, what are some ways small businesses are using AI right now? Give me some examples. Customer service is a big one. Think AI powered chatbots, providing instant support, answering questions, even processing returns. Those chatbots are getting so good too, it's kind of scary. I know, right? 
Sometimes you can't even tell you're talking to a machine. Seriously. But even when you know it's a chatbot, if it gets you what you need quickly, who cares? Right. And for the business, it means they can provide 24-7 support, answer basic questions, freeing up human staff for more complex issues. It's like having an army of tireless robots working for you. Exactly. And that's just one example. AI can also help with things like inventory management. Oh, right. Making sure you have the right amount of stock at the right time. Exactly. And optimizing supply chains, predicting demand, even personalizing marketing campaigns. It's like having a crystal ball for your business. It's about making data-driven decisions. AI can analyze huge amounts of data to help businesses understand their customers, optimize their operations, and make smarter decisions. So less time guessing, more time growing. Exactly. AI levels the playing field, gives small businesses access to tools and insights that were once only available to huge corporations. That's really exciting, but... And there's always a but, right? There's always a but. We have to talk about the potential downsides, the ethical considerations. Yeah. AI isn't all sunshine and roses, right? Definitely not. We have to be aware of the potential pitfalls. Like what? What are some of the big ethical concerns around AI? Well, one of the biggest ones is bias. AI systems, they learn from the data we feed them. Right. Makes sense. So if that data is biased, the AI can perpetuate those biases, even amplify them. Like garbage in, garbage out, right? Exactly. And it's not always intentional either. A lot of data reflects existing biases in society, so it takes a conscious effort to identify and correct for that. So how do we do that? How do we make sure AI is ethical? Transparency is key. We need to understand how these AI systems are being trained, what data sets are being used. So we can see if the data is skewed or incomplete. Exactly. And hold companies accountable for building AI that's fair and unbiased. It's like just because you can build something doesn't mean you should, yeah. right? <laughs> Especially yeah. if it could have harmful consequences. Exactly. It's a huge responsibility developing and deploying this technology. And it's not just on the developers, right? We all have a role to play. Absolutely. We need to be informed, ask questions, demand transparency from companies using AI. So like read up on AI, understand how it works, how it's being used. Exactly. Knowledge is power. The more you understand about AI, the better equipped you'll be to navigate this new world. And to speak up if we see something that seems, you know, off. Absolutely. Don't be afraid to challenge assumptions, to demand better from the companies creating these AI systems. We're all stakeholders in this, right? Right. It's our future after all. Exactly. And it's not predetermined. The future of AI is being shaped right now by the choices we make. So what's the one big takeaway you want listeners to walk away with today? If they only remember one thing from this whole deep dive. Remember that AI is a tool. It's a powerful tool with incredible potential for good, but like any tool, it can be misused. Right. It's all about how we use it. Exactly. So let's be thoughtful. Let's be responsible. But let's also be excited. AI can help us solve some of the world's biggest challenges. If we use it wisely. Exactly. Well said. And on that note, I think we'll wrap things up. Thanks so much for joining us for this deep dive into the world of AI. It's been fascinating, a little scary at times, but ultimately, I think... Hopeful. I agree. Hopeful is a good word. So to our listeners, stay curious, stay informed, and we'll catch you next time for another deep dive. All right, guys, what do you think? Now, that was kind of interesting. It, don't confuse the quality of the sources with the quality of the output. Now, you've seen me do this. I didn't put a lot of um, emphasis on the research. I basically just copy pasted the first result that I got without even reading it. And um, I feel a lot of the topic that was covered wasn't really geared towards the developments last week. So that's not something that is Notebook LM's fault in that case, in my opinion. However, I, I, it does feel very natural. I think it feels very natural. I think it's a very interesting concept of turning basically your context into a podcast. And... Um, it is annoying to a point where they always affirm each other like exactly, totally, uh, and all that type of stuff. I think she said exactly like 10 times. But it's natural. It's, it's kind of eerie and cool at the same time. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to hear how you intend to use that. I will actually use that as my uh, AI think tank later today. And I'll have a conversation with the with the attendees on what they think about it but i uh, hope you enjoyed this and i hope you'll use this as well 
and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.